A team from the IMF arrived in Sri Lanka earlier this month and will be in the country until the 23rd and today a press briefing was held at the central bank premises. Now, the press briefing was led by Krishna Srinivasan, who is the head of the Asia-Pacific Department of the IMF. In his opening remarks, Krishna Srinivasan said that it has been projected that Sri Lanka's economy will contract by 3% and thereafter it will see a growth of nearly 1.4% in 2020. Four. Krishna Sirinivasan also noted that Sri Lanka will undergo an IMF governance diagnostic exercise which will examine Sri Lanka's corruption, vulnerabilities and other aspects. And uh, several other remarks were also expressed. M Peter Brewer, who is the IMF mission chief to Sri Lanka and several other key officials joined the meeting this evening. Uh, the authorities are making good faith uh, efforts to negotiate with all the creditors, both private creditors and official creditors, and the engagement is going on quite well. Uh, in terms of the timeline, it's the expectation that the restructuring exercise will be completed uh, by the first review of the program, which is in September or October. Just to be very clear, the IMF's role in any debt restructuring exercise like this in the context of a program, we define the macro framework the debt targets, and so on and so forth. We don't get involved, per se, in any of the debt restructuring negotiations, defining the perimeter of debt, and so on and so forth. That said, uh, you know, uh, any kind of restructuring will need to keep into account the, to make sure that the financial stability is assured. Krishna Sirinivasan told that the reform program prioritizes five key pillars. The reform program supported under the EFF arrangement is built on strong policy measures and prioritizes five key pillars. First, an ambitious revenue-based fiscal consolidation. Second, restoration of public debt sustainability. Third, a multi-pronged strategy to restore price stability and rebuild reserves. Fourth, policies to safeguard financial sector stability. And fifth, structural reforms to address corruption vulnerabilities and enhance growth. Sri Lanka is the first country in Asia that has undergone the IMF governance diagnostic exercise. The IMF governance diagnostic report is, expect is expected to be published by September this year. The, the IMF supported program is an, is an opportunity for all Sri Lankans to come together to work through this crisis to restore economic stability and put the country on a sustainable growth path. The key is implementation. The IMF is here to help you along the way. Addressing corruption uh, and improving governance is a key pillar of the f program. So one, you can't disentangle the two. So to the extent that we're addressing these issues in the context of the program, it should give uh, you know, support uh, to the reform effort. I think when you have a financial crisis, when you have a crisis of this proportion, there's often a permanent loss. You know, but that can be addressed through, social, through structural reforms and so on. So the first, the phase we are right now is macro stabilization, macro fiscal stabilization, right? Once that is achieved, and also as part of that concomitantly, we could talk about structural reforms, which will help address these longer term growth issues. Senior IMF Mission Chief for Sri Lanka, Preeta Brewer, noted that it is up to the authorities to decide on how to distribute the burden of debt relief. Our role is to ensure that whatever debt restructuring strategy the authorities decide on is consistent with uh, the debt targets um, that are designed uh, for Sri Lanka to restore uh, debt sustainability. Uh, so as, as such, we don't have any particular view on uh, you know, how the burden should be distributed across uh, creditors, whether they're external or domestic. Having said that, um, we, we do have a keen interest to ensure that the domestic economy and the domestic financial, stability, the financial system uh, continue to, to work and, and are stable. So uh, those, those are the aspects uh, that we would focus on that um, in, in the discussions. Uh, it is up, it's up to the authorities to, to decide uh, you know, how, uh, how to distribute uh, the burden of, uh, of debt relief across all these uh, different creditors. Yeah. Uh, you have a severe crisis. In, in Sri Lanka, it's really a severe crisis, which hits people very hard. Uh, and then the IMF uh, comes along and there's a negotiation uh, with the authorities about the reforms uh, that are needed to get out of that crisis. So uh, in people's perception, these two things are linked and, and they may not like it. But Sri Lanka is actually uh, a very good example of what happens when the IMF isn't here. Uh, as you know, the crisis happened uh, more than a year ago 
we negotiated staff level agreement uh, on September 1, and then there has been a long period until March uh, where the IMF program had not yet started, um, and the pain was palpable uh, in Sri Lanka. But the, the pain uh, was uh, clear and present. Um, what the IMF does is it provides some financing that cushions the transition from this very harsh reality uh, to a new equilibrium. So it gives a little bit of breathing space to let these reforms that are necessary uh, take place and help the country emerge uh, from, the, uh, from the crisis.